Let's talk about an amazing and efficient way to create high contrast black and white images in Photoshop like this using Adobe Camera Raw. It's gonna be a lot of fun and also along the way I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks to really spice things up. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to follow along using any photo in the video, make sure to go ahead and download it using the links in the description. So the first photo as you can see, it's a background layer, lock layer, I've already imported that. So first off, make a copy of the background layer, okay? Controller command J. Now make sure you convert this into a smart object. So before we apply the camera raw filter, we want it to be non-destructive. That means anytime we can go back and change the values. And for that to happen, you need to have a smart object object. If it's a raster object, any changes you make and if you press that OK button, it's burned down to the pixels. You cannot go back. So right click on it and choose convert to smart object or you can go to filter, convert for smart filters. Click OK. Now filter, as you have guessed, camera raw filter. Here's the thing. What are we looking for in high contrast black and white images? Contrast, right? And details. So first off, whenever you convert this into a black and white image, focus on contrast and details. So let's go ahead and convert this into a grayscale. How to do that? I'm going to show you a new technique, okay? Right click on this, right click on the targeted adjustment tool and hold the right click button and choose grayscale mix. Simple. It does that very quickly. And also it brings you this targeted adjustment tool, which is also amazing. You can also do it using, okay, let's go back, let's revert back. You can also go back, uh, do this by clicking on this button, HSL grayscale, clicking on this button and then check convert to grayscale. Pretty much just the same thing, but that too brings another feature which we'll discuss in a minute. It is awesome. All right, so let's come back to this basic. Now, first, increase the contrast. As simple as that, we happen to have a contrast slider. Wow, it looks pretty nice. Maybe I'll leave it at maybe 48, 49. Let's go 50. Now, clarity for details. First we're looking at contrast, then details in a high contrast black and white image. Let's go ahead and increase the clarity, but be cautious. Don't increase it too much because if you do, you're going to see something called halos. You cannot see it in this image, but they are very ugly. It's something that happens around the edges. The edges brighten and it kind of looks ugly, just like a bad HDR. You might have seen it. Now let's go ahead and try increasing the clarity. I think 40 is okay. Now it's time for us to have some fun using the targeted adjustment tool. So you can do this before too, before conversion to black and white, but it's always better to convert it to black and white and see how the contrast and the clarity looks in the black and white conversion. Now right click on it and choose grayscale mix. I've already done that. Now what I'm trying to do is instead of using the sliders, why not use it visually? So you can do this. You can do the color adjustments using the sliders. You can hunt around. So instead of hunting around, and see because once you have converted into black and white, you really cannot see which color is where and you get kind of clueless. So instead of hunting around, trying out each slider, here's what you need to do. Click on default, brings every slider to zero. Now using the targeted adjustment tool, if you want to brighten this up, just click and drag it up just like that. Wow. If you want to darken this up, click and drag it down just like that. Done. As simple as that. See how the lips darken? Just like that. Now it looks really nice. Have a look. Maybe we want to darken the sky just a little bit. And it's going to show banding. Why is it showing banding? Because this is a JPEG image. This is not a raw image. And JPEG image doesn't have that much of a detail as raw and you know that. So let's, we'll try to solve it later, but let's go ahead and decrease it. It's looking nice. We'll solve it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Just like that. And maybe try her hair. Oh, I kind of like it. Her clothes. There we go. And that's pretty much done. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Now uh, we can also try different parts of her face. Maybe her eyes. I'm gonna brighten this up just like that. There we go. It's looking fine. Looking awesome. 
Now you can also go back to basic and play with the blacks and whites. Okay, so if you wanna just like that, decrease the whites. And it's looking nice, have a look. Before, after. Really nice. And just the simple black and white doesn't look that great. So, click OK once you're satisfied. And the best part about having this as a smart object is that anytime you don't feel this is right, you can double click on this and go back to the camera raw filter and change the values. See, the values are still intact, right? You can change the values anytime you want. Maybe you want to decrease the exposure, right? Just like that. And after decreasing the exposure, you want to go again to the targeted adjustment grayscale mix and brighten this up just a little bit. Wow. Click OK if you're satisfied. Now, let's take care. Have a look if you want to look at the before and after. Before, after. Much more interesting. Now, let's take care of the sky. There's a little bit of banding. Now, there are two ways to take care of banding. Number one, blur it out. Number two, add noise. And we will do both. Okay, so let's select this guy first. So using the quick selection tool, this is the quick selection tool, click on it and select the sky. There we go. Simple. Select this part. You don't have to be super accurate. Just make sure it makes an accurate selection outside of her hat. And there we go. That's pretty much done. We have pretty much selected the banding areas. All right. Now let's make a separate layer of just this selection. How to do that? Press Ctrl Command J. This puts this in its own layer. Now, let's blur it out just a little bit. Now, if you simply blur it out, let's just make this layer visible. If you add a Gaussian blur, if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna blur it with that background, with that transparent background, it's gonna have some edge issues. So, we wanna blur just this area. We don't want to blur it with a complete canvas. We don't want to do that. So press and hold controller command and click on this so as to make a selection that we want to limit the blur to this selection. Okay, then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And just apply blur so much so that it just covers the banding. Okay. Takes care of the banding. And I think maybe 20 is a good number to be at. Click OK, Control Command D. Now turn this layer back on. Now this is looking really nice. So have a look, banding, no banding. And we have to erase certain parts from this layer. It's kind of started to looking a little crazy. So add a mask, click on this button. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black. You might want to decrease the flow to around maybe 20-ish. And let's start painting here, just like that make certain areas visible, a little of her hair, just like that. And it's pretty much good. And if you accidentally erase extra just like this, and banding appears, press X to toggle between black and white, foreground or the background color, and just paint over it again. Now, but now this guy is looking too much blurred and rest of the things are a little sharp, they have a little noise, they have a little dimension, but the sky is totally blurred out looking fake. How about adding an overall noise, giving it a little film look. Here's how to do that. Very simple. Create a new layer, okay? And this has to be the merged layer of every other layer. So press Control, Alt, Shift, E. If you're using a Mac, it's Command, Option, Shift, and E. Now, uh, you might want to convert this into a smart object if you want to filter. Convert for smart filters, as simple as that. Click OK, and now filter. Filter Gallery. In the Filter Gallery, we have a very nice effect called Film Grain. If you cannot see it, I've already added it. Just make sure you're in the Artistic tab here, okay? Inside the Artistic tab, there will be something called Film Grain. Just select that and make sure you have just one effect here and that is the Film Grain. And if you want to increase the grain, as simple as that. You want to increase the intensity. That adds a little more extra dimension to it. If you want to do that, you want, if you want, you can. I don't want so much of a grain. A little bit of grain is okay. Highlight area. It looks fine. Once you're satisfied, click OK. Have a look. This looks really, really amazing. So let me just go full screen just like that. Have a look. Amazing, isn't it? So this is the before. This is the after. Much more better. Just wanted to let you know two things. Number one, if you're a Lightroom user, you can do this in Lightroom as well. After all, the develop module of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, pretty much the same, right? And number two, if you directly import 
raw photo into Photoshop, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. Let me give you an example. So this is a raw photo. I'm just going to drag it and drop it into Photoshop and it will open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. So here's what you need to do. You need to make all the adjustments that you want. Convert it into black and white. Do what you want. Targeted adjustments. Okay, so maybe you want to just go grayscale mix and then you want to maybe increase the contrast. Do whatever you want. Maybe clarity just a little bit. Maybe take the highlights down or whatever you want you do. Then instead of opening the image, here's what you need to do. Press and hold shift. As you press and hold shift, see what happens. This changes to open object. Now when you click on open object, it will open it up as a smart object. We don't have to right click on it and convert it. If we open the image and then convert it into smart object, we're going to lose all the sliders, all the adjustments that we made there, white balance information, everything will be gone. Now, as you can see, this is a smart object. If I double click on this, it will open up Adobe Camera Raw again. And all the adjustments we did, it's still intact. So that's the way to do it if you're importing a raw photo. Time for a second example and in this example, we're going to add some texture to really, really add some drama to it. So as you can see in this, I'm really scared of her. Um, looks like she's going to kill anybody anytime soon. She has a lot of muscles, more muscles than me. Makes me look really embarrassed. Anyway, so make a copy of the background layer, simple, and convert this into a smart object filter. Convert for smart filter and then go to filter, camera raw filter. There we go. Simple. And then as we did in that, first let's go ahead and convert this into a grayscale. HSL grayscale, convert to grayscale, and then let's increase the contrast, maybe just a little bit. No, too much. Hey, 100 looks good. Then clarity. We want to make it gritty, we want to make it detailed, nasty, because she's strong. Just like that. It's looking nice. And then let's come back to targeted adjustment, right click on it and hold the right click, grayscale mix. Let's try something with her skin. Wow. Darker skin really brings out the extra muscles there. There we go. Maybe we want to darken here just like that. Not too much. Not too much brightening, just like that. It looks really great. Here. Brings out the muscles you see there. This is not a beauty image. This is a bodybuilding image. You don't have to worry about the wrinkles and stuff. The more the wrinkles, the more the lines, the better. It looks great in that. So, looks really great. Pretty much satisfied. Maybe try something with her hair. Something with her clothes. Brighten this up. You want to darken this up. It's a little brightening just like that. And it's looking cool. And maybe take down the blacks to really give it a dramatic effect and also get rid of this stuff right here. So, let's take down the blacks. Wow. Really, really nice. Maybe try increasing the whites. Just like that. Okay, looks good. Click OK. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Makes a ton of difference. And this looks really, really awesome and amazing. Now, time for us to add some texture. So what texture do you want to add? So I'm going to use the Pexels Photoshop plugin to search for free stock photos from inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to use maybe, let's make it a little smaller, just like that. This texture, I already saved it. So all you have to do, just click on that. And I'm going to give you this download. So what you have to do, you have to go to File, Place Embedded. Okay, or if you're using the Pexels Photoshop plugin, it's Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, not Pixels. Some of us got confused. Even I got confused in the beginning when I downloaded it. Anyway, so let's make it a little bigger. Let's fit it to the canvas, just like that. Hit enter and change the blend mode of this one to, let's try different blend modes, maybe overlay. Nah, doesn't look good. Gives it a really nice effect. If you want this effect, you can go for it. Lighten, yeah, it's good, but not nice. Maybe screen. Mm, nope. Let's take it normal. Let's keep it normal and decrease the opacity. Just like that. Wow. It looks great. Now, we want to delete brighter areas of this layer from this layer. And what kind of a thing does that? Blend if, right? So, double click on the right hand side of the layer or right click on it and go to blending options. Pretty much just the same thing. Layer styles dialog box appears. Now, we want to delete the bright areas of this layer, layer 1, from this layer. Now what is layer 1? 
that is the underlying layer, layer that is under it, okay? So, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. And this does pretty much the opposite. We want to delete the bright area, so we will take slider from right to the left, not left to the right. If you take it from left to the right, it deletes the dark areas of the underlying layer from this layer, okay? So slider from right to the left. My bad. All right, just like that. And to make it a little smoother, you know that, press and hold alter option and click on it and just drag it just like that. And it looks really nice. Pretty much good. Click OK. Now we're going to add a mask because as you can see, there are some areas which is left out. So we have to add a mask to it. So add a mask and we're going to paint in black so as to erase those areas. So take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background, makes the brush, uh, make the brush a little softer. You may want to increase the flow to 100 back in and simply paint in these areas. If you spill out, it isn't a problem because it looks like a shadow. Spill out a little bit, deliberately. Look how nicely it looks like a shadow here. So yeah, that's a trick. All right, have a look. We spilled out a little bit and now this looks like an amazing shadow, right? So have a look. Looks really, really amazing. Now it's left out, it's left out a little here. You might wanna just fill it up just like that. And if you paint an extra mistake, press X to toggle between black and white and then simply paint out this area. And there you go, it's pretty much done. Now if you wanna add a little text to it, let's add a little text. Just like here, Wiz Khalifa song, work hard, play hard, work hard. Let's change the font to maybe B-E-B-A-S. That's the font name that, uh, my recent favorite font, Bebas Nue. I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah. Bold, maybe the normal one. And let's make it a little bigger, just like that. It has a lot of space between it. There's something wrong with it. You know what's wrong with it? Double click on it and come to this option, character options, and then choose zero. That's the space. That's the kerning. Okay, so let's make it a little bigger, just like that, work hard. And let's change its color to yellow. My favorite yellow color is FFCC00. So yeah, let's make a copy of it, just like that. So press and hold alter option and Drag it down, this makes a copy of it. And now let's change it to play hard. Looks really nice. And you might wanna just move it just like that. And it's pretty much done. Looks interesting, doesn't it? So that's pretty much how we create black and white conversions in Photoshop using Adobe Camera Raw and some filters if you wanna add them. So just keep in mind three things. Number one, contrast for high contrast black and white conversions. Just the contrast slider. Clarity to add the details black and white sliders to open up the dynamic range. And then don't forget, this is the most important, targeted adjustment, okay? Right click on it and choose gradient mix. Brighten up what you wanna brighten up, just click and drag it up. Darken what you wanna darken, just click and drag it down. And that's pretty easy, simple, intuitive, fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.